In 2015, Universal Studios Hollywood would open a new attraction to serve as the grand finale of its studio tour, and several years later would bring this attraction to Florida as a standalone ride. As guests board the ride, they expect to be taken on a high-octane chase with the stars of their favorite action movie. But what they don't realize is that they're about to embark on the lamest, most awkward attraction at Universal Studios. A ride that only serves to highlight the increasingly unpopular trends of Universal's recent attractions, and something that the Universal Creative Vice President called the biggest mistake of his career. This is the story of Universal Studios' worst ride, Fast and Furious Supercharged. Universal Studios in Hollywood has been operating some form of its flagship attraction, the Studio Tour, since as far back as 1915. Originally a walking tour of silent movie productions, by the 1960s the tour had evolved into a narrated tram tour through Universal's backlog. As Southern California's emerging theme park economy continued to grow, Universal began to open standalone attractions near the Studio Tour, as the area became its own theme park, to serve as the studio's competitor to Anaheim's Disneyland. With this, the the tour would become one of the park's attractions, and within it, several mini attractions would open over the years as stops along the tour, to enhance the experience and demonstrate various special effects used in the movies. One of the earliest of these was the demonstration of the downhill flood effect. After this came the Jaws attraction, where an animatronic shark from the movie Jaws attacks the tram in the Amity Harbour, King Kong Encounter, an indoor soundstage where the tram enters the streets of New York and a giant King Kong animatronic lunges at guests, and in 1989 the studio tour opened Earthquake, inspired by the 1974 disaster movie of the same name. A special effects demonstration where the tram pulls into a San Francisco subway station as it's hit by a catastrophic earthquake. All three of these attractions would later open as expanded standalone attractions at Universal Studios in Florida, all as opening day attractions in 1990. They were all great rides in their own right, but partially served to pad out the number of things to do in the new park. Earthquake, known in Florida as Earthquake the Big One, would remain open at the park for nearly two decades, until 2008 when an updated version of the attraction named Disaster would be unveiled, modernizing several stunt demonstration pre-shows and adding a story to the ride about the production of a fictional disaster movie featuring Dwayne Johnson. Meanwhile back in Hollywood, the studio tour continued to open new stops along its route, and in 2006 would open an area themed to its emerging action franchise. Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift. The Fast and the Furious Extreme Close Up was a small special effects display which opened in 2006, themed around the franchise's third movie, and my favourite, Tokyo Drift. It's not really a good movie. In Extreme Close Up, the tram would pull into a U-shaped display area where two cars were parked. The tram TV screens would play a short video showing the use of computer graphics to plan stunt scenes, and outside the tram, some small bullet and pyrotechnic effects would happen. And then the two cars would lift up in the air as if hit by an explosion to reveal they were being controlled by large robotic arms. The robotic arms would make the cars bow to the audience, and then they would dance to some music, and the tram would pull out of the station onto the next part of the tour. Extreme Close Up was extremely basic. It was a quick demonstration of some robotic arms that felt a bit thrown together and only lasted maybe a minute in total. For what Universal referred to as a visually spectacular chase sequence, it didn't really amount to much. Even the 30 second TV commercial that was put together for its opening showed essentially the entire thing. But for most guests, the mediocrity was quickly forgotten as the tour continued. However, the extreme disappointment that was Extreme Close Up mattered a lot more for the Fast and Furious studio. Sometime after its opening, rumours started flying around that the studio responsible for the Fast and Furious franchise had visited the attraction, and to put it lightly, were not impressed with it. This dissatisfaction with Extreme Close Up 
only grew as the years went on. And after the colossal success of Fast and Furious 6 in 2013, the studio's frustration with their franchise's portrayal at the parks in general reached a boiling point. According to Inside Universal, Around this time, producers from Fast and Furious's studio decided to visit the attraction themselves, and were so unhappy with its mediocrity, they ordered Universal to close the experience immediately. And Universal capitulated, with Extreme Close-Up giving its last demonstration in July of that year. This sudden closure meant that the attraction was not properly demolished, and in fact still sits blocked off and abandoned today on the Universal lot. But now, with an unhappy studio breathing down their neck, it was important for Universal to come up with a new Fast and Furious attraction that would be more well received, and fast, and furious. And so a year after the abrupt closure of Extreme Close-Up, they announced Fast and Furious Supercharged, a new indoor attraction that would open first only in Hollywood to serve as the grand finale to the studio tour, and give the movie franchise a much more prominent place in their park. The new addition to the tour opened in June 2015. As guests leave the Wisteria Lane area of the tour, they pass a house with a black Dodge Charger parked outside. The tour guide announces the car is an unauthorized vehicle on the lot, and phones it into security. As the guide talks to security on the video screens in the tram, they're interrupted by an FBI agent called Agent Novak who tells the tour that the car belongs to wanted criminal Dominic Toretto, the main character from Fast and Furious, played by Vin Diesel. Agent Novak tells the tour he's on his way to arrest Toretto and to be on the lookout for him. The call is then interrupted again by Special Agent Hobbs, Dwayne Johnson's character from the franchise, who tells the FBI agent he is taking control. Hobbs tells the tour that there's a high value witness from the witness protection program aboard the tram, and the villain from Fast and Furious 6, Owen Shaw, is likely to now be after them, putting the whole tram in serious danger. This high value witness, who is actively being hunted by a dangerous criminal gang, is of course just hanging out at Universal Studios. Hobbs directs the tram to a safe house, a truck repair shop and a well-known street racer party hangout spot. As they enter, the TV screens turn on once again, and the characters Roman Pierce and Letty Ortiz welcome the tour to the safe house, and point out some of the vehicles from the films inside. The tram then pulls into the next room inside the safe house, and they encounter a street racer party in progress, a pre-recorded video of actors projected onto a screen using the Pepper's ghost illusion, which is commonly used in theme parks. Agent Novak from the FBI then shows up and kicks out the party goers in an attempt to stop Roman. But Letty, Dominic Toretto and Hobbs all show up as well and force Agent Novak to back down. Dom tells the tour that Shaw will be looking for them, but reassures everyone that they'll be protected with the best acting of Vin Diesel's career. Lucky for you, our whole family will protect you. But not 10 seconds later, Shaw just shows up at the safe house and the tram pulls forward into the next show scene. The tour group are instructed by their tour guide to put on 3D glasses that they received when they got on the tram at the beginning of the tour, as they head into the next room. When inside the room, the tram briefly turns into a motion simulator, as a 3D movie plays out on both sides of the tram on a giant wraparound screen projection. Shaw and his gang show up looking for the witness. Then Toretto's black Dodge Charger from before smashes into Shaw's vehicle and a lengthy chase sequence plays out. The tram escapes out into the streets of Los Angeles as guests are chased by Shaw. But the tram isn't going fast enough because is, it's a tram. And so Roman and Letty hook it up to their truck and hit the nitrous button that every car in the Fast and Furious universe seems to have and the tram gets pulled along the highway at high speed. Shaw catches up to the tram, because it's a tram, but then Letty jumps from the back of the nitrous truck onto a trailer carrying an excavator, climbs into the excavator, and uses it to pick up Shaw's moving truck and throws it off the road into a concrete wall. So, he's dead, right? But then several armed drone helicopters show up from somewhere, presumably, firing missiles and machine guns at the tram. To fend them off, Dom jumps out of his moving car and grabs onto one of the helicopters, which, by the way, is about the same size as him, making either the helicopter really small or Vin Diesel really, really big. And then he, I guess, muscles the helicopter through the air to the other side of the tram where Hobbs can shoot it with a machine gun. Suddenly, everyone collectively realizes that this route they're on just so happens to be the exact one where the bridge ahead is under construction. 
Don't you just hate it when that happens? Dom jumps across back into his Dodge Charger just in time, and everybody hits the nitrous, which I thought they were already doing. Multiple explosions happen as the helicopters crash, and the gang wipes out most of Los Angeles' natural gas supplies, and all of the cars and the tram jump off the bridge, with the tram conveniently pulling into another safe house on the other side of the LA River. The Fast and Furious gang then thank the guests for helping them out, as the tram pulls out of the building to end the studio tour. The new addition to the tour opened to mixed reviews. Some praised it as a fun way to round off the tour, and definitely a welcome change to the underwhelming extreme close-up. Others were critical of the quality of the 3D graphics used in the final scene, the desire by Universal to create yet another screen-based experience, and of the bad axing from the Fast and Furious stars. The action, particularly the moment where Dom basically throws a helicopter out of the sky with his bare hands, was also mocked by guests for being too ridiculous. But I feel that criticism isn't as valid, because Come on, have any of you ever seen these movies? Much of the graphics were achieved by filming the various actors, then rotoscoping a 3D animation onto the footage, and reprojecting the actor's face back onto the animation. This way, the actors could be placed within the 3D scene in a more convincing way than just by filming them. But it ended up creating an uncanny effect when you see the footage in person, where the actors don't quite look real, and everything sort of looks like a video game cutscene. The acting in the various segments is simply odd. All of the cast members look so stiff and awkward, as if they're being held there against their will. I get the impression that none of them wanted to be in this ride, and Vin Diesel in particular looks like he's reading off cue cards most of the time. Guests also pointed out how similar it was to King Kong 360 3D, another 3D mini simulator attraction that had opened on the studio tour five years earlier, which made Fast and Furious Supercharged feel like a lazy reskin of something Universal already had. In fact, something Universal already had on the exact same attraction. The mixed reception didn't really matter too much though. With the attraction only being a segment of the studio tour, it wasn't a massive focus of the park, and so its problems didn't really lead it to gaining any sort of a negative reputation. This would only happen when Universal would look towards their Florida park. By 2015, Disaster, which had been at the park in some form since 1990, was looking increasingly outdated. Additionally, because Disaster was based on a tram tour attraction, it shared the same underlying format as Fast and Furious Supercharged. So a conversion would be quicker and a lot more cost effective than many other options. And so within only two months of Fast and Furious's opening in Hollywood, Universal announced that Disaster and the next door Beetlejuice's Graveyard Review would both close to make way for Fast and Furious Supercharged as a new standalone ride. Initially planned for a 2017 opening, a short delay saw the ride finally open its doors to the public in April 2018, with a dramatic opening ceremony attended by stars from the film franchise, such as Vin Diesel himself. Sadly, this is where the enthusiasm would end. The new Florida version of the attraction contained the exact same main scene, but because of the lack of the studio tour, the original story about the tour being interrupted didn't make sense. And so, a new modified story had to be created, told through a series of pre-shows and video segments to fit the ride to its new location. Guests enter into a brick warehouse containing the ride's queue, a car workshop where guests file past several cars, some from the movies, and some custom made for the attraction. There are also various items, such as car parts and tools you might expect to find in a Fast and Furious workshop. Despite the ride still taking place in Los Angeles, the building is situated in the San Francisco area of the park, and no theming changes are made to justify its location. Entering the first pre-show, they're greeted by a live actor who welcomes guests, before getting interrupted by an incoming video call from Mia Toretto. Dom's sister from the movies. She tells guests that Dom just won another car in a street race, and they're all meeting up at Sullivan's garage for an after party. She then gives a weird Fast and Furious lecture about the importance of family before Tej joins the call and tells guests that their party bus is ready and waiting to take them to the party. Tej then instructs the live actor to send guests onto the war room, the gang's high-tech headquarters, full of computer screens and blue lights, because blue lights mean technology. Here, the second part of the pre-show begins. As guests enter the war room, they're welcomed by another live actor named Jamie, who is experiencing their first day on the job. Jamie receives another video call from Tej, who is interrupted by Dom Toretto, 
warning everyone that the FBI are honing in on their location. And to make matters worse, they're likely to accidentally bring Fast and Furious villain Shaw with them. The gang decide the best option is to send guests onto the party buses as soon as possible, as the party will act as a good diversion away from Shaw. Somehow. And in this way, the Florida pre-shows are able to set up the premise for the main part of the attraction from the Hollywood version of the ride. Guests then move to the loading area of the ride, the location that was originally the subway station loading area from the disaster ride, but is now rethemed to a back alley loading dock area at the warehouse. The party buses that pull up to the loading dock are very similar to the original ride vehicles from disaster, but now have been updated to use trackless ride technology and with more blue flashing lights. As the ride vehicles depart, they round a corner to enter Sullivan's garage, and screens in the vehicles, just like in the tram tour, play another message from Tej, who says he's patching the guests into a transmission from Agent Hobbs. The message from Hobbs is the exact same one as in Hollywood, and from this point on, the attraction plays out exactly as it does on the tour, with the only major difference being that the version in Florida doesn't use a 3D effect on the wraparound screens, and the video only plays in 2D. After the main sequence plays out, the party bus loops back round to the exit of the attraction, and that's the ride. That's it. It's the same as in Hollywood, just now you have to queue for it. When the Florida version of Fast and Furious Supercharged opened, reception was overwhelmingly negative. Guests were quick to point out that the attraction felt like a step down from the original Hollywood attraction, which itself was never great to begin with. For example, the original attraction's motion control was subdued, as it was achieved by the movable tram loading onto a platform, and so it couldn't be as strong as, say, with a dedicated sim. But the Florida version was technically a dedicated simulator, so it could have achieved better motion control and just chose not to. As to achieve that, Universal would have to redo parts of the main scene. This, combined with the lack of 3D, made it feel like Universal had cut back a lot on this ride. The Florida version was expected to expand upon the original ride if it was to justify its status as a standalone attraction. But instead of perhaps improving upon the graphics of the original, or extending the main scene, or adding additional scenes with more practical effects, the ride chose to simply keep the main scene identical to what it was before, making the actual ride segment only last a little over two minutes. The pre-show areas seemed to only exist to ensure the experience wouldn't be so short, and the video segments that played only existed themselves to haphazardly make the new version of the story make sense. To me, the party bus feels very shoehorned in. The transitions from the Florida-specific video segments to the original parts of the ride feel totally detached from each other, and that's because they are. They were produced at entirely different times with different stories in mind, and the way they're mashed together feels very lazy. This detachment becomes even more obvious during the party scene, where Dom Toretto says his line to the driver of the vehicle as he does in Hollywood. Driver, move that vehicle! Because this line doesn't really make sense in Florida. It's originally directed at the driver at a studio tour tram, and so to force this line to work here, Universal's lazy solution was to just put a dummy of a driver in a closed off area at the front of the party bus. Something that most guests don't even notice when they get on board, because it doesn't move, and it just sits there in silence. In Hollywood, while the ride may be mediocre, because it's situated within the studio tour, it's only one small part of a greater whole. But here in Florida, Guests were incredibly disappointed that they had to queue up for their chance to ride past what was essentially a handful of 2D screens that played video game cutscenes for a grand total of two and a half minutes. Fast and Furious Supercharged was also symbolic of a much relented trend that was taking over Universal at the time, which was an over-reliance on screens. Screens are often viewed as theme parks cheaping out. They're often a much easier way to achieve a desired effect, but rarely look as impressive as doing something for real. This really was the era of screens for Universal, as they opened numerous attractions that heavily relied on either 3D or 2D screens and projections, and occasional motion simulation to provide the core of the experience, rather than more traditional practical effects, set dressing and animatronics. Rides like The Simpsons Ride, Transformers, Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, and after Fast and Furious, Jimmy Fallon Race Through New York, and the update to Jurassic Park The Ride in Hollywood, all incorporated screens to varying degrees. And while some of these use them well to enhance the ride experience, the problem emerges when the screens are not used to aid a ride, 
but are the right. And Fast and Furious was a big example of this. Even this specific style of screen attraction can be done right, as was shown a year later when the King Kong section of the studio tour was brought to Islands of Adventure as a standalone attraction named Skull Island Reign of Kong. This uses the same trackless ride vehicle system and the same screens just as in the studio tour, but it expands upon the original version rather than reducing it by having decorative set dressing and additional practical effects and animatronics. Generally a much better and longer screen segment, and of course the giant King Kong animatronic at the very end. Although I'm not sure how Fast and Furious would do that, maybe they could have like an 8 foot tall Dominic Toretto animatronic? But rather than doing any of this, the Florida Fast and Furious felt as if it had simply been lifted from Hollywood without any meaningful changes, and somehow making even less sense than the original. Fans and critics alike viewed it as a downgrade from disaster, and Fast and Furious Supercharged quickly gained a reputation as Universal Studios' worst ride. It's kind of funny, in a way, that Universal managed to replace one disaster starring The Rock with another disaster starring The Rock. So what became of Fast and Furious Supercharged? Did the Fast and Furious studio ride it and request it to be closed immediately as well? Did Vin Diesel show up in his Dodge Charger and trash the place? Well, no, because to this day, the ride is still there, at both parks. The wait times for the ride are never particularly long, although some hardcore theme park fans choose to ride it in groups, just Ironically, even the live actors in the pre-show have come to accept the ride's disastrous reputation, choosing to ad-lib in the segments where they talk to the video screens to make fun of the ride. A month after the Florida opening, Fast and Furious Supercharged was the very first ride to be confirmed for Universal Studios Beijing, which was under construction at the time. But after the negative reception the ride received, one year later, the Beijing version was cancelled. And while there seems to be no sign the Florida ride is going anywhere anytime soon, there may yet be some hope for Fast and Furious at the Universal Parks. As I started writing this video, Universal Studios Hollywood has announced that an outdoor Fast and Furious roller coaster is currently under construction. The most prevalent rumour is that this is going to be called Fast and Furious Hollywood Drift. And while not much is known about it yet, the hope is that the parks will finally get a worthy Fast and Furious attraction. What are your opinions about Fast and Furious Supercharged? Do you think it's the worst attraction at Universal? Have you been on either the version in Hollywood or Orlando? What did you think? And what are your thoughts on the newly announced roller coaster? Please let me know in the comments. And if you're not already, please consider subscribing, as there are always a lot more theme park videos on the way. And in the meantime, you can always check out some of my other videos on the channel. Apart from that, if there's anything else you'd like me to cover in the future, please let me know. And as always, I'll see you next time.